Welcome to Best True Crime Podcast, a division of Best True Crime Books, Games, and Video, LLC. I'm your lead investigator on this case, Judith A. Yates, award-winning true crime author, a criminologist, and a paranormal explorer. Every episode is an investigation where you and I explore true crime, forensics, historic cases, dark history, and criminal theory. We discuss the cases, share information, no chatter, no commercials, no off-topic. Now, grab your crime scene kit, a notebook, and your favorite hat. This is Best True Crime Podcast. Hey everyone, and thank you for listening. I'm standing outside of Bowling Green, Kentucky courtroom on a very stormy, rainy day, across from where a true courtroom drama is being played. Before we start, I need to include a content warning. This podcast contains graphic descriptions of abuse. Trigger warnings include adult abuse by caregivers. I also need to remind you, all persons charged are innocent until proven guilty by a court of law. So I'm standing outside today in Bowling Green, Kentucky, outside of a courtroom, and it is very rainy and nasty. I'm standing across from where a true courtroom drama is being played that is even more nasty. This is more of a tragedy than anything, but let's skip euphemisms and overused true crime adjectives. This podcast is about caregivers turned killers. These three family members were supposed to make life easier for Jasmine Fikes. Instead, their neglect resulted in her death. The details are going to make you lose sleep. The two men wearing orange jumpsuits in the Bowling Green, Kentucky courtroom hung their heads and covered their faces as the cameras scanned the defendant's table. One man, Alexander Leonard, 49 years old, is heavy set, bald, with a silver goatee. The other, Alexander's brother Lonnie Leonard, has somewhat sunken features and short dark hair. He appears much older than his 55 years. Both are appearing in court for a pre-trial hearing. This case has shaken so many people in the third largest city in Kentucky. Alexander and Lonnie Leonard were caregivers for a woman named Jasmine Rose Fikes. Alexander is listed as a husband and caregiver. Leonard's sister, 38-year-old Tiffany R. McCoy, was also listed as a caregiver. All three lived at the home with Jasmine. The home health care agency, Marion House, cut a check to Lonnie Leonard for $18 an hour for 40 hours a week. That's roughly $700 a week as a caregiver for Jasmine. Alexander told investigators he was the caregiver when Lonnie was unavailable. Lonnie reportedly told police that he paid Alexander a portion of the wages he was earning from Marion House. Police questioned Alexander about this payment and he denied receiving any sort of compensation. All three claimed they were caregivers for their wife and sister-in-law. All three have been indicted in the death of Jasmine in one of the saddest cases of adult neglect I've ever had to do on a podcast. It was May 14th, 2023, and just another hot day in Bowling Green, Kentucky, when police officers responded to a call on 429 Gary Avenue. The house has a short gravel driveway leading to a small, square yellow house. The lawn's overgrown, the tree limbs and leaves keep the house partially hidden from the street. You'll see three large plastic trash cans and an old barbecue grill on the front porch. It was the home of a 44-year-old woman named Jasmine Rose Fikes, and she suffered from multiple sclerosis. Johns Hopkins describe multiple sclerosis, also known as MS, as a long-standing chronic disease of the central nervous system. It is thought to be an autoimmune disorder, a condition in which the body attacks itself by mistake. MS is an unpredictable disease that affects people differently. Some people with MS may have only mild symptoms. Others may lose their ability to see clearly, write, speak, or even walk when communication between the brain and other parts of the body become disrupted. 
Jasmine's MS caused her to be bedridden. EMS had responded to a woman unresponsive call at her address. Upon arrival, they found Jasmine in cardiac arrest. She was unable to be revived. That's when law enforcement was notified. But the case is about to become not just sad, but sadistic. I have to warn you, this information is difficult to hear. At 44, Jasmine weighed 52 pounds, so malnourished that she was literally a living skeleton. Officers would testify at the preliminary hearing that the woman's hip bones and rib bones were clearly visible. When officers attempted to lift her body, it stuck to the bed. Jasmine's spine was exposed and there were bed sores on her back that had festered for so long, maggots were buried in the sores and in her skin. There was a cigarette butt stuck to Jasmine's back along with the open sores and maggots. Officers noted the deceased woman was wearing an adult diaper that was overflowing with fecal matter. The diaper was so filthy that it was maggot infested. The woman's hair was matted from filth and an autopsy would reveal sepsis was probably the cause of her death. The conditions of the home were, quote, appalling, one investigator would testify. Further investigation revealed Jasmine had not been to a doctor for about two years. She should have been seeing a physician for her MS every three to four months. A Bowling Green Police Department detective would testify. The medical examiner said that Fikes had eroded bone on her tailbone and some lower extremities. The ME also said that Jasmine's teeth were nubs and she most likely had ulcers for weeks or months that were really painful. The Center for Disease Control states, sepsis is the body's extreme response to an infection. It is a life-threatening medical emergency. Sepsis happens when an infection you already have triggers a chain reaction throughout your body. There may be other abuses as police are now investigating possible financial crimes. The day after Jasmine's body was discovered, Monday, May 15th, police would arrest the Leonards. Both were charged with knowingly abusing and neglecting of adults by person. A few days later, on Thursday, May 18th, Tiffany McCoy was arrested and charged with the same. McCoy had told investigators she would help by cooking, feeding, and changing Jasmine's adult diaper. She said that when she tried to bathe Jasmine, Jasmine would become aggressive. McCoy also stated she had changed Jasmine's diaper the day before Jasmine died. But when she did, McCoy said she never noticed bed sores or any problems with the diaper or any medical problems with Jasmine. All three of these individuals are expected to appear in court again in November of this year. According to her online obituary, Jasmine Rose Fikes will be cremated. Nothing is written about her life, nothing about who she was or even a hint at how she died. She wrote a message to her deceased father on his online obituary and she wrote that she is sad for never mending their relationship, mentioning he pulled a gun on her when she came to his house and wrote she wanted her cat back. Otherwise, nothing. No photos, no memories. What causes abuse of charges by caregivers? Are they just so overwhelmed, overworked, and underpaid that the job just destroys them? Well, this used to be the belief. But a study by Bonnie Brandle and Jane A. Raymond appears in the Journal of the American Society on Aging. And here are some of the things that the study reveals. It is unlikely any single theoretical perspective could explain all forms and situations of abuse by their caregivers. And only a very small percentage of abusers are overwhelmed or impaired caregivers. Some caregivers have medical or mental health conditions that make it difficult or even impossible to provide adequate care. These remaining offenders are narcissistic, domineering, they're bullying types of people, or they're just plain sadistic. Forms employed by abusers will include 
isolation, threats, intimidation, taking charge of all household money matters, and physical, sexual, and emotional abuse. In addition, greed, not stress, appears to be a primary driver in cases of elder financial exploitation. Sound familiar? It's the same dynamic as when a partner abuses another. Some studies suggest that in many cases the abuser is dependent in some way on the victim. Maybe it's financially dependent or emotionally. And this is cited quotes from this study. The Bright Focus Foundation lists some of the signs of abuse against adults who need care. Physical abuse would mean inadequately explaining fractures or bruises, welts, cuts, sores, burns. Just either no explanation for them or a very bad explanation for them that they can't back up. Neglect would be lack of basic hygiene, adequate nourishment, medical aids, a bedbound person left without care, a home that is cluttered and filthy and disrepair, and untreated pressure sores. Psychological abuse signs would be the caregiver isolates the person, the caregiver is verbally aggressive or demeaning, they're controlling, they're overly concerned about spending money or the charges money, or just plain don't care about who they're taking care of. And financial abuse would be lack of amenities that the victim could afford. If they need toothpaste, if they need a toothbrush, if they need bandages. The caregiver literally has control of everything of their charge. And in a financial abuse case, you will see control of the older person or the charge's money, but failing to provide for their simple needs, even taking them to the doctor. And the caregiver is basically living off the person they should be taking care of. You can read more of these signs and learn a lot more about caregiver abuse at www.brightfocus.org. Brightfocus, that's one word, dot org. If you suspect abuse of an elderly or infirm adult, you can find the proper local agency to contact. Call Elder Care Location and their number is 1-800-677-1116. So if you have a case that you are suspect, but you don't know who to call in your area, the Elder Care Location Hotline can help you. Their number again, 1-800-677-1116. I'll be keeping you informed of the case against Alexander and Lonnie Leonard and Tiffany McCoy in later podcasts. Alexander, Lonnie, and Tiffany were caregivers for a woman named Jasmine Rose Fikes. A caregiver's job is just that, helping a person lead a healthy, safe life. These three adults allowed one woman to die a prolonged and agonizing death. And that's the position they held. Thank you for joining me on this investigation, exploring true crime, forensics, historic cases, dark history, and criminal theory. This is Best True Crime Podcast. No chatter, no commercials, no off topic. I do hope you will subscribe. This podcast runs off donations only. You can drop us a donation, $35 or more, and I'll send you a signed book. Just go to www.besttruecrime.com. My name is Judith A. Yates, award-winning true crime author, a criminologist, and a paranormal explorer. Thank you for joining me on Best True Crime Podcast, a division of Best True Crime Books, Games, and Video, LLC. Be safe out there.